So now in this video, we're going to do a quick circuit build of a voltage doubler using the 747 dual op amp. So the top op amp up here is already wired as a virtual ground. So we have two resistors here and they're connected in series. They're a voltage divider. They give us half of the voltage of the rail. We're going to have 18 volts when I turn the power supply on. So a halfway point is 9 volts. The output is going to hold at 9 volts. But a better way to think of it as far as the rest of our circuit is concerned is that this is 0 volts and we have 9 volts to the positive rail and then negative 9 volts to the negative rail halfway point. That way it's easy to get current to flow in either direction based on the voltage that we apply. And so we have a trim pot down here. All the way to the positive rail will be 9 volts. All the way to the negative rail will be negative 9 volts. And the halfway point will be 0 volts. So for wiring the uh, voltage doubler. So we're going to wire it as an amplifier, non-inverting amplifier. And so we're going to use equal value resistors though, which will give us a gain of 2. And so there's some more math involved for that. Uh, that's easier to see in written form. But in any case, we're going to go to the bottom pin, the inverting input, and I'm leaving two spaces mostly because this uh, pin, I think, is catching the uh, leads. So this board's starting to wear out a bit. I use it a lot. So we put that to our virtual ground. That is the first resistor. Now we're going to use the same value resistor. So exact values don't matter. This is also a 10,000 ohm resistor but they have to be equal values if you want a voltage doubler. And so we're going to put, again, that to the inverting input, but now we're going to put it to the output of this op amp. So there we go. Right there, third pin up is the output of that op amp. And it'd be best not to have the uh, resistors touching each other. So there we go. That is the main part of wiring this as a voltage doubler. And there is quite a bit of space between those leads. So. Don't let them touch. But uh, we have to give the other input its signal. So this is a variable signal. So I've been having problems with this trim pot over up here. I usually straddle these uh, spots where they, they took out a uh, dot there. And it's working a whole lot better here. So I'm getting a lot more accuracy in delivering the voltage that I'm setting it to. So we're going to the non-inverting input, which is one pin above, second pin from the bottom one pin above where we just plugged in the resistors. So we go up there and that is it for the circuit. Pretty pretty simple. So as long as you know how to do the uh, virtual ground or if you already have a split uh, power supply which is even better but I don't have one so this is my compromise which I'm okay with. It's uh, more experience practicing with electronics. So I Lately, when we did a circuit, an LED lights up right when we turn the power supply on. So we're going to our virtual ground, the uh, gray jumper there. We could measure it down there or up there, doesn't matter. And you can see, compared to there, we're slightly below 6 volts here. So as I said, it's a voltage doubler. Red LED is going to take about 1.6 volts to start conducting. So twice this is a little less than uh, 1.2 volts and there you can see a little less than 1.2 volts double the voltage so let's uh, turn the uh, trim pot until the LED lights up a bit and see what voltages we're dealing with so doesn't need to be fully lit but we probably have somewhere close to 2 volts at uh, the output here let's see what we have hopefully it makes the math easy to double so yeah that really makes the math easy to double so we will have 1.4 and then about 12 after that. So, or 2.4, I mean. 2.412, about that. And there you can see 2.412. We hit that. As it warms up, it looks like it's going to let the voltage go up a little bit. There we go. It's settled for the most part. But uh, temperature changes do uh, affect things slightly. So, something to be aware of but not a big deal in this one so that was to the positive you can see we doubled it of course it's an op amp with a split supply because we split it so we're going to go negative and so the green LED it really starts to light up at about 2 volts so 
when there's higher current going through the red LED, it's black in about two volts. It takes about two volts before the green LED even starts conducting. And uh, I took a measurement before where it was black in about uh, three, almost three volts. So the green LED blocks more voltage. So I'm gonna guess we're about uh, a little more than two volts probably. And so there we got uh, negative. It's in the negative because that's the green one. So negative 1.14 uh, to make the math easy. So the output is going to be a little bit lower than twice that, which will be negative 2.26 or uh, 2.27. And there you can see a little bit about uh, 2.2. Seven, and we got a little drifting when I moved a little bit, but there it is. It's pretty much spot on, double the voltage. So this is a dub, uh, voltage doubler. We can change the the amount of amplification. That's a little. It's not hard math, but uh, it's a little hard to explain. And so, just uh, you can look. You can look at that up. Uh, uh, op amp. Uh, voltage multiplier non-inverting multiplier and so equal values though it makes it easy you divide one by the other since so they're equal value that's one and then you add one to that number so after you divide one resistor by the other you you get a number and then you add one to it and that will give you the gain and uh, so anyways hopefully the demonstration though was still helpful and I'm going to do this with the number of op amps and then try to see which ones have uh, greater strength and weaknesses from my testing. And uh, I'll try to think of a lot of other stuff to come up with. But in any case, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one.